Hello friends, welcome to Digimento Education. So this is Electronic Devices and Circuits Lecture 9. So hopefully you must have gone through all the lectures that I covered before. So please subscribe to our channel and click the uh, like button if you like the video and uh, press the bell icon for the latest update so that, so that you never miss out any update that we put on uh, YouTube. So let's start with the first topic of this lecture. So in this in this uh, lecture we are going to discuss first about uh, the effect of uh, temperature on various parameters. So it is effect of uh, temperature on various parameters. Okay. So the first topic of uh, first topic is uh, the effect of temperature on the carrier concentration on carrier concentration okay on the carrier concentration which is basically we're talking about intrinsic carrier concentration intrinsic carrier concentration now we know that for an intrinsic semiconductor n is equal to p is equal to ni and uh, ni is proportional to 3 to the power 3 by 2 as we saw earlier so as temperature increases your ni increases and which implies that n and p both increase so which means that the intrinsic with uh, for the increase in temperature intrinsic carrier concentration increases so ni increases with temperature okay understood second thing is Second one is on intrinsic conductivity. Okay, so intrinsic conductivity is sigma i. So sigma i is basically n i q mu n plus mu p. So it's proportional to n i. So if n i increases with temperature, sigma i also increases. Sigma i increases with temperature for intrinsic semiconductor okay uh, that's why i've mentioned intrinsic here okay please keep that in mind now second and the third one we are going to discuss about the extrinsic semiconductor okay so the third second word topic is on extrinsic semiconductor okay so let's discuss about so we know this thing that conductivity in the extrinsic semiconductor is mainly due to the majority charge carriers so we are first going to discuss effect effect of uh, doping effect of doping on carrier concentration okay effect of doping on carrier concentration so for the n type and let's consider this as a p type okay so for n type semiconductors majority charge carriers are electrons so we can say that n is equal to nd and for this majority charge carriers are holes so in this case n is equal to n we can consider that so of course your carrier concentration carrier concentration increases with doping okay second so effect of doping on majority and minority charge carriers okay effect of doping on majority and minority charge carriers okay so for n type and we should consider this for a p type okay so pn is basically the whole concentration ni square by nd this is np is ni square by na so if we increase the doping concentration your minority carrier concentration decreases 
so we can say that uh, pn decreases with doping and np decreases with doping in the beta semiconductor so from here we can say that majority concentration is proportional to doping and minority concentration is proportional to 1 by doping okay understood now in the third topic we are going to discuss the effect of doping on conductivity on extrinsic conductivity okay so effect of doping on extrinsic conductivity now extrinsic conductivity is mainly due to the majority charge carriers so we can again divide this thing into two parts into two blocks this is n type this is p type so we know that sigma n is q nd mu n and sigma p is q na mu p okay so if we increase the doping concentration your conductivity obviously increases so we can say that conductivity increases with doping we can say here sigma p increases with doping we can say that and as i had already told you that for 1 is to 10 to the power for 1 is to 10 to the power 8 ratio of doping conductivity of germanium increases by 12 times for 1 is to 10 to the power 7 doping conductivity of germanium increases by 120 times if you keep on continue if you continue like this 1 is to 10 to the power 3 doping for 1 is 10 to the power 3 doping conductivity of germanium increases by 1200,000 times okay this is a very important relationship and uh, from here we can say above by considering all the properties discussed so far about the extrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor we can say a uh, highly doped semiconductor exhibits metallic properties for example it has large conductivity okay second ntc of resistance transforms into ptc of resistance okay third third part is bipolar nature of the semiconductor becomes unipolar okay because uh, uh, for example anti semiconductor if you keep on increasing the doping concentration if you keep on increasing the doping concentration so the majority charge carriers will be in great amount as compared to that of the minority charge carriers so the concentration gradient of majority charge carriers overpowers that of minority charge carriers so minority charge carriers are negligible uh, as compared to uh, majority charge carriers so it uh, gradually transforms its its bipolar nature of the semiconductor gradually transforms into unipolar nature okay 
a highly doped semiconductor is called as degenerate okay mass action law cannot be applied to degenerate semiconductor okay sixth extrinsic has ptc of resistance while intrinsic has has ntc of resistance okay now having said that uh, we conclude that we conclude the effect of uh, uh, doping concept of effect of doping on the majority and minority charge carriers in the intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors and we have seen what does this result into when we in, what does it result into okay on the intrinsic on the properties of uh, uh, extrinsic semiconductors and uh, intrinsic semiconductors okay so we have seen that uh, the conductivity of a semiconductor increases uh, of, ex of an extrinsic semiconductor increases with increase in the doping concentration majority charge carrier concentration increases with the doping minority charge carrier concentration decreases with the doping that uh, for, for uh, the highly uh, doped semiconductor is known as degenerate semiconductor mass section law cannot be applied on degenerate semiconductor okay if we increase the doping concentration the extrinsic semiconductor starts behaving as a uh, start behaving as a conductor okay uh, the ntc of resistance of a semiconductor will transform into ptc of resistance okay which means that the with the doping with the temperature doping uh, the the conductive the resistance increases and conductivity decreases okay the other properties related to the doping okay so now let's discuss the the effect of temperature on uh, the fourth topic of discussion is effect of uh, temperature on majority and minority charge carriers this is all with reference to the extrinsic semiconductor okay we have been discussing about the extrinsic semiconductor the effect of temperature and effect of doping so let's let, 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 let me uh, explain it with the help of an example consider a bar of silicon so we are considering consider a bar of silicon so when pure when pure pure means intrinsic n is equal to p is equal to ni let us say it is 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube as we have already as i already told you before okay second portion is so by adding the donor impurities let uh, doping is done with donor impurities in 1 is to 10 to the power 6 ratio which is what which is moderate doping 1 is to 10 to the power 6 is moderate doping as i already told you so nd will be equal to 5 into 10 to the power 22 which is basically the number of atoms per centimeter cube into doping ratio 1 is 10 to the power 6 so we get the value of doping concentration which is 5 into 10 to the power 16 atoms per centimeter cube so this is basically donor donor concentration so for uh, we know this thing that uh, if for an n type semiconductor for n type semiconductor at 300 kelvin n is equal to nd we are considering n is equal to nd 
which is 5 into 10 to the power 16 atoms per per centimeter cube okay let's say for anti semiconductor at 300 kelvin at 300 kelvin is this so we can say the p of n is ni square by nd and if you saw if you put the value of ni which is this and nd which is this into this equation the whole concentration which is multi charge carry concentration comes out to be 4500 per centimeter cube okay remember these two values you might you uh, you shall see a very beautiful result after after some calculations okay now now let's increase the temperature let uh, temperature be increased above 300 kelvin let me increase the temperature above 300 kelvin uh, so after on increasing the temperature we know that uh, the covalent bonds are broken and a new electron hole pairs equal amount uh, equal number of electron holes are created EHP's electron hole pairs are created and uh, let's see let's say about uh, 10 to the power 6 covalent bonds are broken okay so we can say that let 10 to the power 6 covalent bonds are broken okay so which means that thermally generated electrons thermally generated electrons key concentration will be equal to 10 to the power 6 per centimeter cube because the number of cons the number of electron hole pairs created will be equal to the number of covalent bonds broken okay and thermally generated holes is equal to 10 to the power 6 per centimeter cube Ele equal amount of electron holes are created so number of electrons moving from valence band to conduction band will be equal to 10 to the power 6 per centimeter cube because they become free electrons number of holes remaining in a valence band will be equal to 10 to the power 6 per centimeter cube okay now so total number of electrons in conduction band will be equal to 5 into 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube plus 10 to the power 6 per plus, uh, per centimeter cube because there is an addition of the electrons so as you increase the temperature so we can see that it is 10 to the power is of the order of 10 to the power 16 and it's of the order of 10 to the power 6 this is mere this is merely negligible this is negligible in comparison to the electrons concentration which were already present in the semiconductor okay so we can say that this is again equal to 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube so there is no effect on the concentration of electrons in an extrinsic semiconductor on temp uh, uh, on temperature so there is no effect on these on the electron concentration due to the temperature so temperature incre increments does not have any effect on the or or you can say very uh, or have a very negligible effect on the majority charge carrier concentration in the extrinsic semiconductor while on the other hand so percentage of majority charge carriers percentage increase in majority charge carrier concentration is negligible okay now total number of holes let's see total number of holes it was 4500 per centimeter cube plus 10 to the power 6 per centimeter cube now we cannot approximate uh, we cannot uh, neglect 10 to the power 6 here so we can say it is nearly equal to 10 to the power 6 per centimeter cube because 10 to the power 6 is very very larger is very very uh, large than 4500 per centimeter cube 
so whole concentration here you can see has been increased so percentage increase in minority charge carriers concentration increases with temperature so these are, these are the, and this is very high very high increase in the temperature so you, you can see so let me jog uh, these points let me jog down these points uh, uh, so that it is more so that it is more clear to you all guys to uh, make a quick note of so first point is that minority carrier concentration increases with temperature and this is with reference to extrinsic semiconductor okay increases with temperature second majority carrier concentration remains constant with the temperature okay majority carrier concentration increases with doping while minority carrier concentration decreases with doping fourth at certain high temperature minority charge carrier concentration becomes equal to majority charge carriers concentration that temperature is called as curie temperature okay okay now the last part of a discussion is uh, okay now let's discuss the fifth part effect of temperature effect of temperature on extrinsic conductivity okay effect of temperature on extrinsic conductivity so first of all let me draw the plot which shows which depicts the relationship between the conductivity of an extrinsic semiconductor and temperature so let me draw this thing this is temperature axis this is conductivity axis so the behavior of this curve looks something like this first the conductivity increases with the temperature okay at 300 kelvin this is at uh, up to 300 kelvin this is up to 300 kelvin and after that what happens will really gobsmack you it starts to decrease with the temperature okay starts to decrease with temperature and then it repeats again after after and that happens still the curie temperature tc and after that it starts to repeat itself starts repeats itself okay 
TC. Now, what is Curie temperature? TC is basically a Curie temperature. So, it is a benchmark. TC is very, very high temperature. So, we can note down that at T is equal to TC, extrinsic semiconductor again becomes intrinsic. Okay. And TC, range of TC is 1000 degree Celsius to 1400 degree Celsius, very high temperature. Okay. So, at TC, conductivity of intrinsic semiconductor is slightly greater then sigma i so we can say conductivity at curie temperature is greater than sigma i which was n i q mu n plus mu p this is important to note down okay at sigma tc is greater than sigma i is equal to n i q mu n plus mu p and this is very slight Incre increments. Now let's briefly let's uh, uh, let's uh, discuss in greater details uh, the behavior of such plot. Okay, so at T is equal to zero Kelvin, which is an absolute temperature. So carrier concentration are zero and conductivity is uh, zero, and next to semiconductor acts as an insulator. So at this point, conductivity. Conductivity is negligible because there is no conduction, there is no movement of the charge carriers. So, we can say its conductivity is negligible and uh, extrinsic semiconductor acts as insulator because there is no conduction, conductivity is negligible. Now, we slightly increase the temperature when temperature is greater than 0 Kelvin and temperature is less than 300 Kelvin. Now, we are increasing the temperature slightly. So, we can say that uh, due to ionization, the conductivity of extrinsic semiconductor increases okay so third point at t is equal to 300 kelvin conductivity is maximum conductivity of the semiconductor is maximum and this portion, these, uh, this portion is shown by, this behavior is shown in this portion, okay, 0 to A. So, you can say it's 0 to A. Now, now if we increase the temperature beyond, beyond 300 Kelvin, so when temperature is greater than 300 Kelvin, but T is less than the QD temperature. Now, what happens in this particular case? We have already seen that uh, majority charge carrier concentration is totally independent of temperature. So, majority charge carrier concentration does not change. We can say that majority charge concentration remains constant. Okay which is independent of temperature, independent of uh, temperature. Second, minority charge carrier concentration increases with the temperature as we have already seen in the, uh, as we already saw a couple of minutes ago that minority charge carriers uh, major minority charge carrier concentration increases 
with temperature because of the formation of new electron hole pairs formation of holes as well third point now we should we should also see with increase in temperature with increase in temperature mobility of the charge carriers decreases because of lattice scattering so because of lattice scattering mobility of the charge carrier decreases because it is in inverse relation with the temperature to the power of 3 by 2 so as temperature increases as temperature increases mobility of the majority charge carriers mobility mobility of majority charge or in all you can say major uh, mobility of a charge carriers decreases because of lattice scattering as you already saw that because of this particular relationship so conductivity conductivity of an extrinsic semiconductor decreases because we know that ex for an n type semiconductor is q n d mu n so this remains constant q is also constant so mu n decreases with temperature so sigma x uh, sigma ex decreases constant constant this decreases so this decreases fourth okay now at t is equal to tc and this portion is basically shown in this so this behavior is shown in this a to b plot you can say this is ab and that t is equal to tc minority charge carrier concentration minority charge carrier concentration becomes equal to majority charge carrier concentration and conductivity at tc slightly greater than sigma i niq mu n plus mu p slightly okay for when temperature is greater than curie temperature conductivity of semiconductor increases as as ni increases with temperature because the semiconductor is now intrinsic okay that t is equal to tc the extrinsic semiconductor becomes intrinsic semiconductor and hence for the temperatures greater than curie temperature ni increases because of that particular relationship that ni is proportional to t to the, t to the power 3 by 2 so conductivity of a semiconductor increases with the temperature when the temperature is greater than curie temperature okay so these are the properties that we uh, that you should know Uh, what is the behavior of this thing and you should know uh, the behavior of this particular plot this is important so from here you can see that uh, extrinsic semiconductor for a certain range of temperatures exhibit ntc of resistance this is ntc of resistance and from here it exhibits ptc of resistance okay now after that it repeats itself it start increasing with the temperature okay okay so uh, now let's uh, let's begin uh, uh, with the introduction to uh, hall experiment now let's start a new topic we are going to start a new we are starting a new topic which is basically a hall experiment okay hall experiment this is important with respect to gate examination as well as ies examination a, uh, a lot of theoretical questions have been asked from this topic 
as well as some numerical questions. So uh, you can expect at least a, a minimum, at least a two, a two mark question, two mark question, at least, at least a two mark question you can expect in uh, gate examination as well as your IES examination. So this is important with respect to that. So what is the basic definition of a Hall uh, Hall experiment, Hall effect? Okay, okay. It states that it states that if a specimen, if a specimen, which can be metal or semiconductor, metal or semiconductor, carrying carrying the current carrying the current i is placed in transverse transverse magnetic field b okay and an electric field intensity E is induced is induced in a direction perpendicular to both I and B this is the definition basic definition of a hall experiment okay so it also says that uh, the specimen should be rectangular shaped rectangular or square shaped okay so what can we really achieve from the whole experiment? What can we really achieve? So hot experiment can be used to so by whole experiment we can achieve first we can determine or we can achieve determine whether a given specimen is metal or semiconductor and in semiconductor we can also determine whether it is p type or it is p type or n type okay second point it states we can determine the carrier concentration in the specimen okay Third, we can determine the mobility of the charge carriers. And that's basically a majority charge carriers in the semiconductor. Fourth, we can determine the magnetic field intensity okay and we can determine we can uh, we can uh, achieve we can make in designing of hall effect transducers okay 
so what is a basic block diagram of uh, this thing uh you can see consider so this is b vector magnetic field in, uh, density this is this is x y and z okay right handed system we can consider the current to be flowing here and uh, and we can this is the block rectangular sample specimen okay this height is considered as d this is considered as w okay this is the upper surface this is the lower surface so this is basically a basic setup and the electric field intensity is induced in this particular direction so this is basically a basic setup of the whole experiment i will discuss the whole experiment in the greater detail in the next lecture till then just go through the basic concepts that i have told you in this uh, in this lecture okay thank you very much